All right, so today I will be showing you how to make a swinging log trap, which uh, can make a bad day for a lot of apples. But this trap is really more of a novelty. It's used in a lot of movies. Um, I know it makes an appearance in Star Wars, and I'm sure uh, quite a few other movies. So uh, let's get right into making this trap. Okay, so you can see I have already hung one log from our branch up here, and uh, this log um, is hung in the same way as the second, which I'm going to show you how to do, but the uh, second takes uh, some finer adjustment to get it to match up to the height of this log. So I will go ahead and start hanging that second log now. Okay, the first part of this is to take a long piece of line just like this and hang it over our branch up here. And uh, you want to position this so it will be the tail end of the log, which uh, from my direction would be the right hand side. Um, and this will be designed in the same way as the left hand side is of this log here. You'll have this knot on there, which is a uh, just a basic slip knot. So I have this line over the branch and what I will do is get about a foot and a half of slack on the ground down there. And that's for if you have the log suspended off the ground about a foot and a half. I will now take this end of the line here and wrap it back around over the tree, this time crossing over the other end of the line. Now when there's weight put on this side of the line, it'll bite down on this free end and it will uh, prevent this line from uh, slipping free of the branch. Alright, now we will take this end of the line here and we will start by putting a slip knot in here, which goes by first making a loop just like this and then taking this end of our line, the end hanging from the tree, and pushing that right through there, just like that. And there's our slip knot. Now this loop we are going to put over the tail end of our log, the end that will not be contacting this. Now adjustments to the height of this tail end of the log here can be made by going up to our branch, lifting on the weight bearing side of the line, and then uh, pulling on this end to raise it. And I can't do that with a camera in my hand, so I'll go ahead and do that and show you in a second the result. Alright, so I've tightened up the slack, and now you can see that the tail end of this log sits roughly in line with uh, the other log. So we will now start working on the front end. Okay, so now what I've done is I've taken the tail end of the line that was originally just hanging loose on the ground and I've uh, wrapped it around the tree, um, around this branch a few times to bring it up to uh, where the forward position of the log will hang. And uh, this will be just short of where the front end of the other log is hanging. So I'll go ahead and run this down to the ground and I will make my knot here to support the front end of this log. Alright, to support this front end, what I'm going to do is I will just lift the log up with one hand and take my line and run it underneath on the other. And you want it a little bit lower than where you originally want it to sit because as soon as you um, put the knot in here, it's uh, going to lift this log up. So I will hang it just a little bit low, just about like that, and then I'll take this and start going around it. Okay, you can see I have wrapped this line around the log one time, and now I will divide it in half to make what is called a bite in the line. And that looks just like this here. This right here is what you call a bite. And I'll go ahead and take this bite and keep on wrapping it around the log, just like this. Back and forth around this pivot here. So you can see there is actually no knot in the end of the line right here. This is just going to be held on by friction. Okay, we can now see that these two logs are hung pretty well in line. So what we will go ahead and do is start setting up the trigger mechanism. Okay, now to start setting up the trigger mechanism, I will take one more piece of line, run it under this loop on the rear of each log, just 
like that and tie this into a bowline knot right there. Okay, so I ran into a little problem that I should have thought of when designing this trap, and that is the slip knot that you put right here that I still have on this log, and I'll change that in a minute. Um, it loosens up when you uh, put tension on it with uh, your secondary line with your little bowline in here. And um, so what I've done is I have undone that slip knot and put in basically a uh, like a half a tennis shoe knot. You can see the little loop there and you basically just tie a little pretzel knot in there and then uh, basically as if you were lacing a uh, tennis shoe. Okay, so you can see I've put a nice little bowline right in there on this third line and I've tied it right around this uh, log right here, which uh, now, as I said, has a tennis shoe knot rather than a slip knot in there. And what I'll do is I'll take this line and run it right over the limb itself that all these lines are already attached to. And this is what's going to hold the weight of uh, these logs being pulled up into the air. And um, you don't have to find a nice little knob like this. You could actually run it right over the branch right here, but this is actually pretty convenient. And the farther away you get this line, the better. The more uh, evenly spread the tension is going to be on the two lines holding the logs. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull these logs tight, just like that, and I will uh, take the tail end of this line and see right about where it contacts the ground, and that's where I'm going to make the mechanism for the, for the uh, snare, the mechanism that's going to trigger the snare, that is. And so I'll put a nice little mark in the ground right in here and that's where I'm gonna put my mechanism and we're doing this to both sides of the trap and that will be uh, done to that log as well the same story okay now right on that mark I've made I'm gonna pound in a stick shaped like a Y just like this and uh, this trap is a copy of itself on both sides so you can see I've already done that right over there you can see that stick right there Okay, so here is our entire trap set right now. And uh, you can see I've taken this line here and I've tied on another stick. And just like the tree spring noose trap, I have this um, acting as a lever on this Y-shaped stick, which is um, being pressed on by this cross beam right here, which then is pressing on the other side, which also has this second stick tied to the end of this line. Now setting this trap can be a little tricky since you need to work with two of these at once. So what I'll do is I'll take this, put tension on the log, bring this down and uh, set the mechanism like this with a rock or a log or something behind it so this can't release until I go over here. Now it's impossible to uh, do this with one hand, so I'm not going to be able to do the whole process on camera. But basically I'll take this center stick here, press it up against that side of the trap, put tension on that, then come back over here and set this side. I'll then go over there and remove the rock and this trap will be set. So here is what the mechanism looks like when it is set. And it is the same story if you follow the stick across right over to this side. And these lines are going right up into the trees and then coming right down and pulling, holding these uh, logs up in the air on either side. And when you hit this stick in the middle here, if you watch that log, you gotta watch your hands with that one.